Well, hello, and welcome back here to Natchigal. Thanks for the response from the last episode. Now, I said if you if you guys liked it 20 times, I would make a new episode. So far, you've liked it 30 times, so here's the episode. And the same uh, idea is going to persist here. So if you guys like this episode 20 times, I'll make the next one, and so on, and so on, until we get through the story. If you guys decide you don't want to see this anymore, don't like it. It's simple as that. So, in the last episode, our, our heroine, Miranda, has been captured by two mysterious men with very pointy teeth and trapped in their castle. So, she has just been summoned to the Lord's Chambers. Roger that. There you are. My apologies, sir. The human was asleep. But it's night. Ah, I remember. Humans normally sleep at night, don't they? Well, you had better get used to sleeping during the day. The sooner, the better. I'll try. God, I'm so tired. I don't know what you heard about vampires, but you'd better not underestimate us. And do not bother attempting garlic or crosses. They only make me angry. It's not like I regularly carry garlic around anyway. I really have no choice but to stay here. I get it. Good. I'm glad that you understand. So, welcome to the Palace de Natchigal, otherwise known as Natchigal Castle. Normally there are ten of us here, but the rest of them are away at the moment. Oh, I remember you saying that before. Where do they go anyway? It's not your business to know. Right. Sorry. Yikes. I gotta be careful. Just because he's friendly most of the time doesn't mean that he won't slice me open if I push his buttons too much. These guys are vampires. What's up? I mean, what is it? Those clothes that you're wearing. I wasn't paying attention to them before, so I didn't notice sooner. But they really are quite garish, are they not? Yeah? Luca, find us something better to wear and change her immediately. Yes, sir. Wait, what? Hold, hold on. Can I, can I just keep? No, confiscated. Then, could you at least leave the room while I'm changing? Denied. Pervert. What was that? Nothing, sir. There, much better. Now you actually look like a woman. Well, thanks. Gee, I can barely breathe in this getup. It's so uncomfortable. Now I get it. Luca didn't stay in there because he wanted to oogle me. It takes two of us to put this thing on. And he took my clothes and put them away somewhere. Even my necklace. Wait. Don't tell me he took it away so my neck would be easier to access. For a while there, you've been making very many amusing facial expressions in rapid succession, you know. Eep. Crap, completely forgot they were there. Well, didn't forget, but whatever. He looks pretty entertained, so I guess it's okay. Let me guess. You were thinking about what we were going to do to you. Well, it's natural for you to worry about that, of course. We vampires feed on humans, after all. The atmosphere around him changed all of a sudden. Don't tell me he's really going to suck my blood right here, right now. Did you forget that you're in a vampire castle? How careless of you. Lucas said the same thing earlier. Of course, I didn't. I just... Damn. I let my guard down because they were being a little nice to me, and they weren't what I expected. I know they're vampires, but this is really sudden. My stomach grumbled. It was really loud, too. What was that sound? I believe it was her stomach growling. It means she's hungry. Is that true, human? Huh? Uh, yeah, I haven't had to eat anything to eat since yesterday morning. So much happened that I just forgot to eat, I guess. 
I see. What do you eat anyway? I recall they mainly eat animal meat and vegetables, sir. That sounds dreadful. More like normal. Well, neither she nor I can leave the castle, so you shall have to go out and get food for her to eat. Hmm, nor I? Why can't Adrian leave? Doesn't his family own the place? You! You, man! Ah, uh, yeah. Draw up a list of things you want to eat, and Luca will fetch them for you. We cannot have you starving, or else your blood will taste awful. Also, humans can die of starvation. Right, that too. We cannot have that. Ah, uh, okay. So my life is just an afterthought. Well, you are far from being my type when it comes to women I prefer to drink blood from. But at the same time, I am curious for that very reason. As Luca said, I never did have one like you before. So stay healthy. I'll do my best. That's a good girl. I spend the next hour or so writing up a list of food that I want to eat. Adrian tells me they are spare no expense, so I shouldn't hold back. I wonder if they know what foie gras is. I didn't see any light shining through the curtains. Well, I slept through the daylight. Those two made me stay awake for an entire second day here. At the crack of dawn today, I'm just about passed out. Come to think of it, that's kind of how I, like I got over my jet lag when I came to Belgium. If you take naps, it just makes it harder to adjust. Hmm. I came here on the night of the 8th, so I'm guessing it's the 10th now, unless I pulled a Rip Van Winkle or something. It's going to be hard to keep track of time without any clocks or calendars. Guess you don't really need those when you're a mortal. But I'm not, so I'll keep a record in this notebook of what day it is. Eleven days left. Ha. Ah, there goes the rest of my holiday. I wonder what will happen if a visa runs out while I'm here. I can't exactly be deported out of the country if I'm busy being held prisoners by vampires, though. I've been sleeping so long that my limbs feel all heavy. I really need to stretch them out. Wait. It might be hard to do that in this dress. Well, I guess it's time to do some exploring. Walking around will make me feel less groggy. Hi there, Steve. Oh, wait, you're not Steve. Ha, this is a different hallway. You all look the same. Though I'll call you Johnson, then. Hmm, Johnson. Are you conversing with my Johnson, with that statue? Whoa, how long have you been there? As usual, this guy just appears out of nowhere. I entered the hallway just now. You always happen to turn up no matter where I am, huh? It's not difficult given that vampires have heightened senses compared to humans. Besides, you trod the ground so loudly one might mistake you for an elephant. Well, that's not very nice. Neither is the incessant noise you make. I suggest that if you're attempting an escape, stop now. Lord Adrian's senses are even more fine-tuned than mine. Wouldn't dream of it. At least, not while I know this guy's skulking around. Why are his senses better than yours, though? My lord is a second generation vampire, while I am of the third generation. It's simply a difference in birth. Those born to a generation closer to the head of the family are stronger. Birth? You mean he's been stronger than you since he was a baby? Vampires are not born in the way that humans are. He just he just trailed off. I kind of wanted to hear more about vampires, but what should I do? Okay, well, uh, let's just ask him. Let's see if we can get uh, you know, a bit more understanding out of this. I can't believe been getting a joke, and joking with this guy might get us a bit et. So, how are vampires born then? And exactly what will you do with that information? What can I do with it? Will knowing how vampires are uh, made affect anything? I'm just curious about, curious about who I'm living with. Do you guys really have no reflection in the mirror? What happens if the sun shines on you? I guess we've already covered the garlic and crosses thing. Yes, we get a little burnt. 
and once again garlic and crosses, as well as holy water, have no effect. But how are vampires born? All vampires were originally human except for the edge head of the family. We were turned by other vampires, and don't bother asking me how, for I'm not familiar with the method. I was unconscious when it happened to me. Even though he's sighing a lot, he's still answering my questions. You're probably wondering why I'm bothering to respond to this minutia. A little bit. I have found when faced with someone asking an annoying barrage of questions, it's simply best to answer, especially if the questions are no, of no real consequence. Lord Adrian has always been inquisitive and energetic. The sooner I deal with his demands and questions, the easier it is for both of us. I would never have been able to live with him this long otherwise. Deal with? There's certainly no love lost between Luca and Adrian, huh? Though Adrian doesn't seem to mind him too much. And how long has it been? 203 years. I have been his companion since he was turned. 203 years? Yes, that is what I just said, human. Now, if you are quite finished with your questioning, I would like to show you to the kitchen. You guys actually have one? Though human food does not sustain us, we are technically able to eat what humans eat. Some vampires even enjoy it. The Lady Blanche de Natchigal, for example, has a taste for mint tea. I see. Since you are staying with us for some time, I have been prevailed upon by Lord Adrian to set up a cache of food for you here. You may prepare your meals in the kitchen whenever you please. S so there's a courtyard in the middle of the castle. A little patch of outdoors. How neat. You don't see that kind of thing outside of Greek architecture. If I want to get to the kitchen, head for the center. Got it. If there's any more that you need by way of ingredients or foodstuffs, simply state my name and I shall come to you at my earliest convenience. What if you're on a different floor? Locating you should not prove difficult given your usual volume. For example, I could hear your entire one-sided conversation with Steve earlier this morning. He? Was that a smile just now? If you require nothing else, I should take my leave. Ah, uh, no. That's all. Thank you, Luther. There he goes again. Ah, wait a sec. I should have asked him how to get back to my room from here. Crap. Gosh, I've got totally used to sleeping through the days and waking at night. Maybe I'd make a pretty decent vampire myself. Yeah, <laughs> just kidding. Did something move over there? <laughs> no way, it was probably just a trick of the firelight. Yeah. What happened? Where's, where's the fire? There, over there. A fart. I don't even want to say the name. Correct me if I'm wrong. Could it be that you're screaming and shaking due to that spider over there? Gee, even hearing the word spider makes me squirm, I'll just nod. Really? You're afraid of a little spider? I got bitten by a spider when I was a kid, so now I've got a pretty bad arachnophobia. Besides that, spiders the like the size of my hand. Oh yes, this is Jupiter's pet spider, Eggbird, wasn't it? Eh? Jupiter? Jupiter is one of my older brothers. I surely thought he would bring Egbert with him on the trip. However, perhaps it escaped. These Natch gals are definitely an interesting bunch, that's for sure. You're shrieking in terror over a harmless spider? I had taken you for being more iron-hearted. Is it really harmless, even though its fangs look like that? Well, I suppose a human like you might die if it were to bite you. That's not harmless at all. Just don't let it bite you then. You know... Somehow, I am rather dissatisfied with this. Hmm? With what? 
Your reaction was not nearly this interesting when you met us. Normally, wouldn't someone fear vampires more than spiders? After all, they actually prey upon humans. They've hardly done anything to me, though. I mean, I actually remember being bitten by a spider when I was a kid, but these guys haven't attacked me or hurt me at all. Knock on wood. Though I did get forced into this ridiculous outfit, I just can't bring myself to fear them somehow. Since they haven't bitten me, I can't bring myself to fear them, is probably what you're thinking, correct? Is that true? You do not fear us? Even though, if we pleased, we could kill you any moment with a barely a flick of our wrists. Mmm, uh, well, you're not, uh, not scary, I guess. Hmm. Human. Miranda. Huh. Why did his voice get all hunky? Uh, hunky? Hunky? Why did his voice... <laughs> well, that was a little bit Freudian, wasn't it? Huh. Why did his voice get all husky? Wait. That's the first time he said my name, isn't it? Shall I show you what true terror is? You don't have to do that. He kept coming towards me. Ah, I'm backed against the wall. Really? However, I do insist. His voice was right next to my ear. <laughs> His fangs just draped against my neck. Is he really going to? I'm sorry, you're scary, you're scary, you're very scary. Hmm. <laughs> you are an honest one, are you not? You wear your thoughts and emotions on your sleeve. Figuratively speaking, of course, your current attire has no sleeves. Gee. It's my victory, then. Come, Luca, it's your turn. Must I? Of course, it wouldn't do for her to fear me alone. This form human needs to understand whom she's dealing with. If you insist. What's he gonna do? I can't imagine Luca doing anything like what Adrian did. But maybe I'm being naive. Close your eyes, human. Do we really have to do this? If it's what Lord Adrian says, yes. This really stinks. Okay, there. Now, hold still. What on earth is he going to do? Not being able to see really makes it pretty nerve-wracking. Just then I feel something fuzzy and scratchy on my shoulder. No, 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 he wouldn't. You'd better be careful. I don't believe that Egbert likes sudden movements too much. Yeah. You, you. I nervously look at my shoulder while keeping as still as possible. It's a piece of steel wool. <laughs> you should have seen your face, human. Even with your dark complexion, I could see all the blood draining out of it. I'm so glad to have entertained you so, my lord. So, which one of us did you think was scarier? Hmm. Okay, my feeling here is that uh, Luca was scarier because Adrian just played his nature, whereas Luca identified what Miranda was scared of and played that. So I'm going to go with Luca. I just about had a heart attack when I thought he put a spider on me. <laughs> Luca was scarier. <laughs> Your G didn't use the prop, Luca. Don't be a sore loser, my lord. I never would have thought that those guys would have such a normal side to them. I still shouldn't let my guard down, though, I guess. Lost again. You'd think that almost asked that you'd think that after almost a week I'd be used to this place. Oh, hi Tim, or is it George? Great, now I'm getting the statues mixed up. Are you really going to name every single one of them? I'm sure gonna try. It helps me keep track of which hallway is which. Which hallway's got the witch in? 
I'm not even fazed by this guy's sudden appearance anymore. You seem to be getting lost with about the same amount of frequency as before, however. Well, I'm doing my best. What are you up to, anyway? Lord Adrian has a new obsession. Lord Adrian's new obsession has been three-dimensional puzzles. He's asked me to purchase another one for him, so I was on my way out. How often does he get use these new obsessions? Once per fortnight. Occasionally he gets bored sooner. And what do you do when you're not attending, Lord Adrian? I don't understand your question. Serving my lord and the Natchgel family is my entire purpose here, and it takes up all of my time. You've just been a servant for 200 years? And you're going to be serving them forever? Yes. I have to say, that doesn't really sound like a great, that, like that great of an immortal life. Are they forcing you to stay, or what? I see absolutely no reason to tell you. Before, Luca basically said he'd answer any question that was of no real consequence. So if he's not answering it now, it means that there's a, the reason he stays here is important to him. If that is all then, I shall take my leave. Away! And off he goes. I think I might have brought up a touchy subject for him without meaning to. I was just curious is all. If he's not being forced to stay, I wonder why he does. Does he get anything out of it? Hmm. I'm feeling kind of tired today, so I think instead of getting lost for the billionth time, I'll study a little. I don't think I've cracked open a book since the first night. Too much other stuff going on to focus on reading. Let's see. How about architecture? Ooh. The Royal Theatre of Namur. You can really tell they were going for the Italian style. The ceiling mural reminds me of Michelangelo's work in Florence. Don't tell me you spend all of your free time reading. Yeah? Oh, Lord Adrian, I didn't realize that you were here. Drop the Lord when Luca isn't here. I loathe such stuff, he is. But he probably can still hear. <laughs> I am ordering you to cease referring to me with an honorifical epithet. Effective immediately. If Luca takes issue with this, I shall deal with him then. Speaking of Luca, I, you seem to be spending more time with him than with me. To be honest, it's not my choice. Oh, not that I dislike his company or anything, it's just I'm not exactly trying to find him either. I just can't find my way around here. The castle's too huge. Tonight's actually the first time I decided to give up wandering around and take some time to rest and read. My achievement for the week is finally being able to find the kitchen without getting lost. Your goals are set rather low, are they not? Is such a thing even being worth proud of? Easy for you to say, you've had 200 years to get used to the place. For me, it's only been a couple of days. I suppose that much is true. Well, how about I give you a little tour then? To be honest, I really wanted to have some time alone to read, but if it means no more getting lost, I'm all for it. Sure, if it's not too much of a bother. You should consider yourself fortunate, mortal, for I have never before deigned to give anyone a tour of Natchigal Castle. Do you guys get a lot of visitors? Well, no. But that is what exactly what makes this so special. <laughs> Nothing faces him, eh? And this, this is my brother Ingomar's room. Actually, you could say that the entire thing is his territory. No one ever comes over here much. While the door hinge is all singed black. That is why the rest of us tend to stay away. Ingomar is fond of lab experiments. To this day I have yet to ascertain what exactly he is trying to accomplish with them. There have been a number of fires here. Ah. Speaking of which, that building you're looking at in your book, what was it? Oh, it's the Royal Theatre of Namur. Seeing Ingomar's room reminded me the fire that occurred there in mid-19th century was his doing. What? 
You mean that your brother's an arsonist who set a royal building on fire? Gosh, I wonder what it looked like before it was rebuilt. Oh, you see, my sister Osana did not like the style of the place, so he called on a favor for Ingemar. If you like the architecture and decorations the theater has now, you can thank my elder siblings for it. They were instrumental in the current design. But the place was renovated again just recently. A family as old and powerful as mine has many connections and much influence. His eyes kind of twinkle when he's talking about his family. He seems to be really proud of them. What are you smiling about? You seem very fond of your family, that's all. I think it's nice. What is there not to like about my family? I am the youngest and the old doll for me, so... I wonder if that's really true. If they care about him so much, why do they leave him here while they all went away somewhere? And doesn't Adrian get lonely? Right, well, okay, that is our 25 minutes up. 25 minutes of doing silly voices. If you want some more, give this video a like. And if as soon as it gets 20, I shall make another one of these and put it up. So, as soon as you guys get round to liking it, I get round to putting one up. It's as simple as that. So, until the next time, I have been Simon Parsons. This has been Nat Chagall. Thank you and good night.